I love filming and dancing. You need to, you need to seriously do it for that girl. great on camera. Yeah. You don't even try. I probably have bated breath. Like from the monster's impulse of blood through bated veins. I am struggling to be novel, a new man. Season an incomposite soul, not so craggy nor ancient. God, and yet I am the breadth of all passion, and yet the breadth of all passion that lies in the truth of this placid faces, features, as a thing without measure, is seen in the thwarted clarity that any face supposes of itself, for considerable moments so. The proof is there in the look of the bust. I'm the bust that is pallid with mourning, tired with mourning, tired with mourning. Yeah, a as I describe my languid self, just at the regularity of her clear, steady speech. It was the usual story, vulgarly told: <laughs> admiration for his genius, sympathy with his suffering. Only a woman could understand. He clenched his hands in a fury against the enormous impertinence of women, their noisy, intrusive, curious enthusiasm, like the spontaneous expression of admiration bursting from American hearts before Michelangelo's tomb in Santa Croce. The voice droned on, wavered, stopped. He sketched a tired gesture of acceptation and prepared to withdraw once more within that terrifying, silent immobility. She turned on the light and advanced carelessly into the room. An eruption of demons would not have scattered his intentness so utterly. She sat down before him at the table and leaned forward with her jaws in the cups of, his, of her hands. He looked at her venomously and was struck in spite of himself by the extraordinary pallor of her lips. Of which the lower protruded slightly and curled upwards continuously. On this episode of Seinfeld, Jerry's on drugs. 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 Liar, liar! Your 
pants on fire! Different from what different from what different from what the trider lies trider lies to make serious pointed in this cake.
and uh, this is my grandmother's house right now. Got a cup of coffee. And uh, if you guys want to FaceTime, that's a great one. Thinking about reading Martin Buber. Buber. I and thou. Because the first couple pages really have spoken to me thus far. It's a short book. Despite that there is a ghost somewhere behind me in that mirror over there. There is uh, something much the less real of a ghost. What is it? Uh, what's that? something to that. Not knowing all the decisions you make as rightly yours. And now I don't mean some sort of Freudian repression. I mean the existence of an outsider. So why is it then that when I turn, I always foresee what it's in that The other has turned away. And so I turn back to the table. That's why marriage is valuable. over his screen.
Keep on going, keep on going. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it came up to God. <laughs> we are all people and anyone can do whatever they want. <laughs> recipients after all of what whatever beyond chucks back to us in hopes we use it to shape in our own way ourselves rather than just for hands to get up 
from up in the ether somewhere. To happily shape something. Something else. Happily. In a compliance akin to helplessness. The base urges as a directive, but not catalyst. To swerve and so revolt as clay from heaven. And so as to be more than the world. But if the rotten world were mine, then mine for, for me to paw forth on and mine to direct towards safety, for my own understanding flies. Then passions, as I would have had without realizing, instead of quickly I wasted, addressing a beyond more furious, only to be checked back to me as guerdon for the toils of all, would, if encountered by what is beyond, have their riddance uh, from me. Uh, what? And all. Well, anyway, the universe. in a pro appearing okay. different. Not the lies we need to serve us. We just love it too. And so then to the question or whether me or other know such problems. Straight in the and eye. Once touched by heaven, though <laughs> only touched. This my little clod of symbols <laughs> might appear different, though it is the same clod, the same asked <laughs> question. I think in being the same though. clod would appear unchanged. <laughs> Though it has been to heaven, it has been rejected by heaven. So that though it has seen well what what I have not, this my dirt for all to examine, is examined and thought of as nothing special. Wait. And even if comprising the world in me, I am if this human, uh, three thousand. If there are four of me in a group walking down the street, as useful as figments, uh, I will make white people figments of reality to uh, as it is, though they share in the same shape. Though I am no shape for heaven, nor in a shape to receive it, and I'm the and wreathed in ignorance and poor planning, and yet all these words are all for heaven. <laughs> And all distill the tremors in my hands, each to each that know of man that he is not enough. This should instead be for the dignity of broken Others, vile others, who live just to declaim to vile blackness. They might hear an echo, so dumbly oneself to that which has a name in us. Yet like fools, <laughs> we all and I wish to keep our faces, so that I and all men broken then might be fixed to some daft god of the world. But all of us, we will remain broken. Nonetheless, we'll remain as the chaff, disjecta, of an honest void beyond heaven already. More much more dignified than words allow for, and by frank avowals made divine in me and all, and still sounding vague with stillness, and strong. So then I am the clay, we are the clay of an unreachable strength. And in recognition, though born jagged, I now am of a grace, both haunting and inconsiderate. For I am, we are, the echo. I am the dull echo for the void to face finally. And the void will with my voice make of me a clay, answering my answers to the answers, but not so limitless as I imagined, not so limitless as to shape questions forever out of fact. I and all men, anyway, only know the fact of our passions, and we, out of a dignity, get a grip and shoo them off. And so am I in being the yelling void, left a world of dull and frivolous answers, belched occasionally for nothing. Sometimes, however, serendipity occurs, and myself and we all waken from the moil, and afflat us for so long in turbulent slumber. Turbulent, though somehow for a moment we arrange with discretion a few base fits for the base work of passions to justify 
an identity fleeting as Shay. But then tragically we are deserted, and with the dark masculine of an utterance the void returns, touching the dignity of my name and the name of everybody. For we are all too devoted to fact, and not enough to the shape of symbols, ill-formed and fraught with unbelievable shade. And we all are of the shade of suffering out, a wealth of answers, suffering out, and meddling with some aching bareness and brokenness as a bow rested by high winds. <laughs> From the tree of knowledge now is but an abstraction, a weird gas, filled to blooming with the brokenness of the shape for a moment to loosen and redact. And so the hour of dignity made manifest yet again, shows all of man the heaven in themselves for a little, made manifest out of a nothingness of their own typified play. And as such, this damnable afflatus stripped to the nakedness symbol, our question becomes of a quality and fabric more divine than any answer could have declaimed brutally. By men to men and by me to me asked, and all for the rotten pleasure of suffering. And all to flip a thing on its head, and all to groan. Not so much under the dull weight of a void, but so as almost to release the moment quickly by a breath of my own conviction stitched as fabric, like the loose world tight, we and all, all and, and, and my, myself let go, dignity. And as for my passions, they are not, they are as utterances of a disembodied head jabbering to groin out of nothing the idea of a sum of symbols and codes and to feel less alone in the dark psyche of a world made for all of a passionate though incurious humanity stitched out of a fabric stillness breathing in and out and made scrupulously just for me to shout for, so that all in all might chance answer the clay of ourselves, without a question, without a reason or source, so as to chafe the stillness of a loud and crude infinity, and leave me at all, of course, robbed of the fabric of odd life, and the beginnings of thought left without any ends of a thought, and this done by sapping the drama and strangeness of names. For what would have been an unbelievable understanding between earthly and divine things that leave quietly, live quietly, and co without questions of the poem of answers. satisfied as being an approbation of the pith of flesh. As would a wayward doak, a lost mind wishes to stick to, might know and real are his own frank intelligence, and dogged, might in his shade hear the howl of all the incurious world, and know that each walking clod of clay, sicklied over with a pale cast of dignity, is ridden once ridden of that nothing. Nothing.